All right, how's it going, guys? Today, we have another Walker mower. This is not my Walker mower. This is a, another landscaper's mower. Uh, it's actually a uh, company that takes care of the properties where my shop is. And he asked me, I guess he saw, he's seen my videos on YouTube and he knew that I knew about uh, Walker mowers. He asked if I could go ahead and uh, give his Walker mower a full evaluation. He's having some issues with it. One of the biggest things is his right hand side hydro is slipping uh, pretty bad, pretty much to the point where it can't be used anymore. Uh, so we're going to look at that. And basically I'm going to go from front to back, back to front and uh, give it a full evaluation of things to look for, common problems and that type of things uh, for Walker mowers. So this would be a very entertaining video if you're into Walker mowers and you want to learn more about what to look for and a lot of the things that go bad in Walker mowers. Uh, so let me uh, bring you a little closer. We'll do a little walk around here. What we have is a 2015 and it's a T25i. T25i uh, which is very similar to the old Walker uh, MTs, you know, which it is an MT model, but it, uh, it's very similar to the old ones. They haven't changed too many things. And it's got the black gas tank with a fuel gauge uh, in here, which uh, shout out to uh, Burnt's Lawn Care, who actually just rigged up on his older Walker mower. He put a sending unit in the gas tank and actually put a fuel gauge right here instead of the voltmeter, which I thought was a pretty cool idea. Uh, check out his video if you're interested in that. Uh, I believe it was a couple of months ago he did that. So yeah, we got a uh, fuel injected uh, Kohler 25 engine in this one. Uh, he did buy this mower used, I believe he told me. Uh, yeah, I think he, he bought it with like 600 hours or something. And this now has 1,056. So yeah, pretty much all the same. Nothing has changed, uh, you know, from, from if you've watched videos of me doing my walker mower over. Pretty much everything's identical. I mean, they've changed the muffler style. Got some different electronics for the uh, fuel-injected motor as opposed to the carbureted. But other than that, everything up here is the same. It does have the larger 10.5 blower that he already knows that he needs. You can see there's a hole right there. Uh, so he's already ordered up. I believe he's already ordered a new blower. I'm pretty sure he's going to need a new hydro. Uh, looks like we've got a safety uh, disconnected here. Not sure what that's about yet. We'll dig into that. Um, like I said, we're going to go from head to toe, and uh, I'll show you the things to look for and uh, things to watch out for uh, is more, more like it. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this deck off. Working with a uh, remote mic today, so hopefully the audio is good. So I can be way over here and have the camera over there and you should be able to hear me just fine. I'm using the uh, Rode Wireless Go 2s and then I got the lavalier mic uh, connected to my shirt. For anybody interested in making videos, that's what I'm using. And uh, the, video quali the audio quality I think is very good. Uh, so for now we're going to go ahead and uh, pull the deck off. I'm just looking everything over really quick, making sure there's nothing that's uh, been rigged up to stop us from doing that. Everything looks fine. Uh, so we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start with pulling this spring bracket off right here. Okay. Then we just need to pull these two pins right here. This one and this one. I find a lot of times if you loose, loosen these pins, take the pressure off. Gives you that mechanical mechanical advantage to get this off. Is that a lot of pressure on that one? Now that I remove those springs, I actually should have pulled those pins first before I pulled that, but now we should be able to slide it right up. There we go. Okay. So this is what it's going to be looking like when we pull the deck off. Uh, right away, I've already seen some issues here. Uh, this is spring activate activated, which kind of holds this up. And it won't go back down because as you can see right here this plastic is bent these do wear out fairly frequently i find about every two or three of the ghs blower replacements you need to replace these chutes as well uh, this is definitely this could be rigged up and repaired we could bend this back i've done that before but i'm looking like right through here you can see there's a hole right here 
There's a hole right here. There's a hole right here. All kinds of scuffing and whatnot on the bottom. It's in pretty bad shape, so I'm going to recommend that we uh, we replace that as well. Um, so there's that. Uh, the other thing is these deck wheels will break. These ones appear to be in good shape, but they actually have a, a newer style. Okay, so here's the uh, paperwork that comes with the replacement roller wheels. They are now uh, much thicker than these older pizza cutter style ones. They're very similar, but they're almost double the thickness. Uh, so they hold up a little better. Uh, very inexpensive. I forgot how much these were, but uh, when you buy this, this uh, kit, they call it an upgrade kit, roller wheel assembly. Uh, that's the, it just comes with one so you gotta buy two of these kits but the kit does come with there's a little spring washer a little lock nut or a uh, serrated nut with a flange on it and then this uh, this uh, Allen head bolt for the wheel uh, which is very similar to the hardware that's on here I don't know if it's a different size because the wheel is a little thicker or not but it does come with all the hardware so if you need the hardware too you don't need to order that separately if you want to replace these wheels on your deck these are the newer upgraded ones, like I said, that are, uh, are thicker. As you can see, there's not even a part number for just the wheel itself. You have to buy this kit that comes with the hardware and the wheel, which surprisingly enough, they actually have a listing for the hardware separately, but not the wheel. So, but yeah, that's, uh, that's that right there, part number 5162-12. Okay, while we're on the subject of replacement parts with those wheels on the deck, uh, this is a kit that I've mentioned before. I have a video on this. Uh, this is the external input shaft on the hydro. It's the bearing, the seal, and the shaft that slides in where your pulley connects to. And uh, this is part number 5025-13. Uh, the owner of this walker uh, gave me this uh, that he had bought, which uh, I believe he was thinking that it needed it. Uh, we're going to evaluate and see what it needs, uh, but I'm pretty sure that the hydro that this was intended for is uh, beyond repair of just this at this point. Um, but I just wanted to mention uh, this is available. Uh, you are going to have, when we get to it, I'll talk more about it, but there is going to be a tiny little bit of play in your input pulley for your hydro. It, it'll actually be quite a bit of play before to get to the point of where it's leaking. The shaft is actually just slides right into another shaft that is fixed into the hydro unit. This is kind of uh, just a little external subshaft, uh, kind of like a, a stubby subshaft of the actual drive unit inside the hydro, the way it's set up. So you'll find that that pulley will actually have a good amount of play to the point where you're surprised it's not leaking and it won't be leaking yet, but that's because the seals actually weigh inside at the beginning of this shaft. And because where this slides into the other shaft, these splines will get a little bit worn and there'll be a little bit of play, but it will still not leak and be usable, but you don't want it to get too far. If you can catch it in time, you can replace it with this kit here. All right, so we got the deck off for now. I'm going to do a visual inspection underneath to make sure that uh, all of our linkages for the hydro are tight. There's nothing broken, missing, bent, that type of stuff. Uh, the, the owner of this mower did mention that he, I think he went into a ditch or something, hit something with it and bent some things and it's never worked since properly. So I'm expecting to see some type of damage under there, uh, but I'll bring you under there with some lights and we'll see what's going on when we get down there. All right, so here we are underneath. We've got the deck removed. Here is our PTO shaft that we should be able to just slide right off this PTO box. It's just got this little spring release coupler. You pull this back. This is something you want to lube up as well to make sure that it's uh, nice and free and moving. And there's a U-joint in here to inspect to make sure it's tight. And then you want to take a good look at these splines on this shaft on the PTO box. And uh, right away we see there's some fluid in here. It's definitely, definitely leaking something. It appears to be this hydro, but we'll investigate a little bit more. Also, it looks like this PTO box might be leaking some. Hard to tell, it might be just coming from the hydro, uh, but we'll determine that a little bit more when we get inside. Uh, but this box is rebuildable. You can get the, the uh, bearings and seals and whatnot to rebuild it. Uh, or you could just replace it all together when it goes. Uh, make sure you always have fluid. I think it's only about eight ounces of fluid in that box. 
but you always want to make sure that uh, that has fluid. It does last a long time as long as you don't run it out of fluid. If you've got a slight leak, you can usually get away with it for quite some time as long as you maintain the fluid level. So, uh, But right here we're looking at a, uh, some type of leak, so we're checking the linkages right now. I'm just moving this handle, watching for play. Everything looks nice and tight there from here all the way down to the linkage on the, that side. And then we'll try this, this side here. Same type of thing. Looking for movement between this arm and the shaft. Sometimes it can come loose on the shaft right here. And you'll think that the hydro is going when it's actually just this nut backs off. There's a little uh, keyway in there that holds it. So everything's looking pretty tight there. Uh, this hydro, is nice and dry, so this one appears to be not leaking. Uh, and this side is not the side, but the problem, it's this side that's leaking. So I'm uh, pretty sure uh, our issue is this hydro. Uh, however, we're gonna check the fluid level and we're gonna see if, if it is low and we can add fluid, we might be able to get this to come back. Uh, and if that's the case, we can find out what is leaking and reseal it and still get some more life out of that hydro. Uh, but we'll cross that road when we get to it. Again, the blower needs replacement. We already know that. So that's all I'm looking at under here. Not too much to, to see. Uh, but that's, uh, this is the bottom of the battery box right here. Here's your two gear boxes. Uh, those are usually bulletproof. Never had any issue on any walker with any of those. They're just basic gears inside and just regular um, uh, gear oil inside. It's actually a drain right here. And then on the outside, there's a fill that looks just like this. Actually, it's the, I believe it's on the top on these, but these little Allens. But we might be changing that fluid as part of the service, or we might not. We'll see when we get to that. But here's our shaft. Connects to here. You want to inspect for play there. This one's actually feels pretty nice and tight. I can tell just because it's tight going on. And uh, we've got another U-joint right in there, right here that we want to look at. It's all just a bunch of very simple components that you want to take a look at and uh, see if there's any wear or breakage, cracks, that type of stuff, loose pieces. Uh, so, so far, that's where we're at. Going to make our list. So far, we've got this chute right here that we're going to need to replace. And we've got a leaking hydro and a blower. Okay, so now we're inside here. This is the right-hand side hydro. This is the left-hand side hydro. So the rearmost hydro, that is the one that we're experiencing the oil leak. And from up here, let me bring you over. I do not see any oil up high, which is indicating that the oil is leaking at a lower point on that hydro which is probably going to be that input shaft. You can see the top of the PTO box right down there. It's a silver box with a little Allen head fitting on it. Let's see if we can see it right down there. That's nice and dry. And then uh, the, P the uh, actual hydro itself looks dry as well as that one did, like I said. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and check this fluid and uh, if it is low, we're going to add fluid and then see how it behaves because right now it is slipping. And if we're able to get that to come back and operate, we might not have to replace it. So let's pull that cover and see what we got. Somebody on one of my recent videos, or not one of my recent videos, on my older videos, asked me about these rubber, what I call balloons, inside this hydro unit, this right here. Okay, these can get, there's actually some water in the top of this. I don't know if you can see that or not, some water in there. Uh, but you can actually replace these rubber boots. What happens is they'll shrink a little bit. And this, this lip right here goes on the top of this plastic reservoir. And then this machined ring squeezes it down tight so it doesn't leak. I've had these when they get old. Like I said, they'll shrink a little bit 
and they'll come into it a little too much and then when you tighten the cap it actually pops it in a little bit and then you end up getting a leak right through here. This might actually be leaking from up here. I, I don't think it is, but it's, it's a possibility. Sometimes it can leak right through the reservoir. All right, so now I'm looking down in this uh, reservoir. It is a little bit low, but it is not out. Uh, if it was below, you can see that hole in the middle. If that was open, that means that the fluid or air could have gotten down inside of it, but it's not. It's up above that. It's actually a little bit low, but not much. This whole reservoir only comes up about a quarter of an inch. And uh, so that is not the case. So uh, there's really nothing else on the hydro that's serviceable unless you, you know, take it apart. Uh, like I said, this input shaft pulley right here is replaceable uh, but that's not going to change anything internally the way it acts all that is is basically just the pulley and the sub shaft on the outside uh, that's not going to if you've got a problem with your hydro that's not going to help it in any way so you definitely uh, don't go and try to change that shaft unless your hydro is working properly if you've got excess play or you're starting to leak there and the, and the hydro is still working good you can get away with replacing that but at this point we're past that so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this belt this hydro belt off another thing you want to make sure uh, see these spring pulleys what happens is sometimes they'll get tight in here if you don't or if you don't grease them properly and these will bind up to the point where it stops putting tension on the belt and your hydro will slip and it's actually just the belt that's slipping it's not the actual uh, hydro uh, so a lot of times people will think their hydro is going bad and usually it'll happen both of them You'll notice the left and the right are slipping you'll start going up hills And you'll start to get like a squeal sometimes sometimes it doesn't squeal it just slips Always check to make sure that this spring is in good shape and connected and that this is free it has Full range and is able to pull this pulley down to hold that belt on tight uh, The other issue we have right now is there's oil all over this belt which is probably from this hydro leaking, uh, which isn't helping things either. So once you get a little bit of oil on one of these belts, forget about it, you need to replace it. So that's another thing we need to add to our parts list. Uh, it's gonna need to be replaced is this, uh, this hydro belt. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. Walker's uh, pretty smart in that they allow you to service all the belts, all or any of the belts right out in the field without any tools, uh, which is nice. The PTO belt for the uh, for the blade, I say PTO because it might not be a mower deck that you have on here. There are other implements, but uh, there's that three ribbed belt. Uh, is a little tricky to get to over here, but it's it's uh, once you've done it a couple of times, it's pretty easy. Just a little tight. But go ahead and pull this belt off. And for these tile belts, what you usually do is turn them backwards like that and see if there's any cracks. Uh, a couple of cracks here and there isn't too bad, but once it gets to the point where there's a ton of cracks, you definitely want to replace it. Um, or, again, if oil gets on it. This is soaked in oil. Uh, if you just get oil on it, like accidentally you spilt oil on it, and you can go ahead and soak this in a, like, uh, say, some Dawn dish detergent and some water for like a half an hour or an hour, and then scrub it and clean it up really good, you can get away with reusing a belt. But once you get some oil on here, it really soaks in like a sponge. It's really hard to get that oil back out, and your belt is always going to slip. Uh, so, again, that's to the parts list. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking. It looks like this pulley was replaced. I don't know why, but there's a little bit of play on this pulley. Plenty acceptable. I've seen way, way worse than this. Even when it's like brand new and you put the new kit in, it has a little bit of play. Uh, this has, I would say, about 25% of how far you can go before you need to replace it. Uh, but again, the internals, because this hydro is bad, uh, it does need to be replaced. So there's nothing else. There's no adjustments. There's nothing else you can do to this hydro. Uh, once it starts slipping like that, it, that's it. It's not going to be the gearbox. The gearbox itself is just straight gears. It either works or it doesn't. If it stopped moving altogether on one side, there's a possibility you could have broke something in the gearbox, but I've never seen that happen. 99.999% of the time, if not 100% that I've seen, it's the hydro if you're having an issue. So 
again we're going to need a replacement replacement hydro on this unit and uh, so we'll continue on PTO box this is going to let us know whether we're leaking okay we're down a little bit on the dipstick we've probably got about seven out of the eight ounces in here that's pretty good uh, the top of the box is very dry and it looks fairly new I believe this has been replaced uh, already you know who knows maybe yeah with a thousand hours it probably shouldn't have had to be replaced but it's pretty clean um, and the fluid is clean and it's only down a tiny little bit so I don't think that all that oil down there was from the PTO I definitely believe it's leaking right out of this hydro as we can see all on these fins is just all gummed up right here so that's the problem there so other than that we're doing a, like a visual, looking all around, all of the components, just looking for anything that's broken, bent, all the linkages, everything looks really good on this machine, everything's nice and tight. And then we've got some type of uh, other connector here, which looks like just set up for a battery tender. It just goes to the battery. I'm gonna show you how we can tell if the belts are any good. And the pulleys. Now, if I have a worn pulley, like if you look right here, you can see how deep this belt is down inside the groove right here. The pulley's a little bit worn and the belt's a little bit worn. Uh, what happens is when this goes all the way down into the groove where it's actually touching the center, uh, it starts slipping really bad. So this, this right here is another thing that can slip that could make you think that your hydros are going bad. You've got your engine that spins this belt over to this jack shaft that spins this, which is what turns your hydro. So if this belt is slipping right here on this pulley or on that pulley down there, it'll act like your hydros are, are slipping. Again, this one, only one side of the hydro is slipping. The other side felt a little bit weaker than it should be, but I believe that's just because the belt is slipping because of all the oil on it. So. Once we replace and clean all these pulleys up and put a new belt on it, that's going to rectify that situation. But this belt is pretty deep down into this groove, so we're going to do an inspection on these pulleys, uh, see how worn they are. We might want to recommend replacing those as well. Um, <clears throat> again, there's a certain level of restoration you can do with these. What I like to do at a time like this when we're really going through and doing some major repairs, even parts that are on their way out maybe are gonna be you know okay for maybe maybe a season or even a part season but they're not you know they're worn but they don't necessarily need to be replaced yet I like to replace them while we're in here and got everything apart and if the parts are somewhat still usable I save those as spares because then you can have a spare part pretty much anything that might go on this machine that you can repair out in the field quickly if you have a problem with something um, and it, you're basically killing two birds with one stone. You're replacing the part and getting a brand new part for now. And then you're also going to give yourself a backup part that you're going to have on the shelf so you don't have to wait for a shipment or go down to your Walker dealer or whatever to get a new piece. So, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this, this belt off here. So yeah, I'm going to look at this pulley. This has a lot of wear on it. Uh, this is just, all this is is just an idler pulley that just keeps tension on the belt. Uh, so the wear is okay, uh, it doesn't really need to be gripped, uh, but that indicates that there's an issue with the belt or other pulleys as well because usually this belt looks like it's been replaced fairly recently and these pulleys appear to be in decent shape. Uh, so they are, I'm going to say, good 60-70% of their usable life, so not going to re recommend replacing those. I would like to see a new idler pulley, but the bearing is in pretty good shape, so that's not necessary, but possible replacement. Now I'm looking, trying to get you guys to see all down in here. I'm looking at all these linkages, okay? Go ahead and activate the blade. Looking for any extra play in any of the linkages. Everything is nice and tight. Nothing looks rusty. We've got all the grease fittings. Everything's looking to be in good shape there. Uh, this is the, the blade switch right here that tells everything when the blade is uh, engaged or not to shut the machine down. It's part of your safety system. 
Okay, so, and now uh, we're going to get to some of our obvious stuff. You know, you've always got your engine air filters. There's two filters. There's a pre-filter and a filter. So, as you can see, this one's full of grass and debris right here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and knock all this out. Give us a good idea of the debris that gets in there. And what I like to do is take some compressed air and I blow from the inside out, which helps blow this stuff out. Now, you don't want to blow 90 pounds of pressure in your air because you can rip this element. But, you know, a good 30, 40 pounds of air pressure, kind of blow it, really clean it up really good. Um, unless I get oil or it gets wet and expands or the fibers are falling apart or it's really black, um, I reuse this until it gets to that point. So this one I'm not going to recommend replacing. Um, a lot of people just replace them just because. Um, but it's not necessary. Uh, you know, this is in good shape. This still has plenty of usable life left. We're just going to blow it out and uh, we'll go from there. The filter is not failing because the inside filter, as you can see right here, is nice and white and clean. So no debris or dirt is getting inside. Uh, so we know we're in good shape there. I uh, got your fuel filter right here. Fuel filters right here, just a little plastic, easy to change. Make sure if you do change it, there's an arrow on it that indicates the direction of flow of your fuel. So the tank, you can see the bottom is coming from the tank, and you can see the arrow pointing up, which goes into the engine. So that's installed correctly. Um, that's kind of a maintenance item if you have, especially if you have dirty fuel, if you've had dirty fuel, uh, you can kind of, luckily these are clear, you can look inside and see if there's a lot of debris if you got any brown chunks from any rust or any leaves and debris in there. Uh, this one actually looks fairly clean. I don't see any debris in it, so it's fairly recent. I'm not going to recommend changing that just to change it. I'm going to go ahead and check our engine oil. Simple stuff here, right, guys? This is something you you do. Uh, you're going to change your, you're going to check your engine oil before each use, right? We all do that, right? So we're looking pretty good there, about halfway up the uh, allowed range for full and low. So we're all right there. I'm going to ask if he uh, needs us to do a service on it or if it's been serviced recently uh, as far as that goes. So we're looking good there. Okay, now what I find is a lot of people will stay up with the grease fittings on these mowers, but they don't do a lot of the other things. If you look in your manual, there mentions a lot of places where you should just use like a uh, multi multi purpose. I use this uh, premium synthetic multi -lu multi use lubricant by Blaster. It's called Multi Max. Find this stuff's really good. It holds up when it gets wet. It stays on. Uh, WD forty works, but it also seems to wash off a lot quicker than this stuff does. Um, so I find this uh, really good for this use. But there are a lot of things I'm going to go through. Uh, hopefully I don't forget too many of them. Um, but I'll show you a lot of the main ones that people don't do. And what happens over time is they start getting bound up and you start having tighter uh, controls and stuff over it. So Walker is pretty good with grease fittings on almost everything in here. So if you follow the book and you hit all the grease fittings, uh, this is the best grease going that I can find. Uh, they sell this right at Walmart, auto parts stores, this red and tacky grease. I love this stuff. It is a little expensive, but uh, it lasts a lot longer than regular grease. Water won't touch it. Uh, it holds up. I find I, gre I can have to grease a lot less often when I use this stuff. So this is what I use when I do all the grease fittings, okay? And this is what I use for the other things. Now what I do, things like this. Any moving part that doesn't have a grease fitting, like this here, you've got your linkage right here. It's another thing we can see that is loose. Something we need to take care of. we have right here, we can see this bolt is broken off inside the motor, so we're going to have to get that bolt out, extracted, and replace it with a new bolt to hold this down. There's another repair that we need, but we'll go ahead and take care of that. Um, but see these, anything moving, okay, so inside here, and it does, it does tell you this in the book, the manual. Uh, this isn't something that I uh, invented or do anything different, but Take yourself a little bit of this oil. 
These cans are nice because you can adjust the amount that comes out, kind of keep it a little bit low so you don't waste it. You go ahead and give it a couple of movements, okay? The end of this cable, I try to get a little bit of oil right there. You want to get your linkages working all nice and freely, okay? And then there's quite a few spots up under here. All right, this has a grease fitting, but this linkage right here does not. This is for your parking brake. So go ahead and spray, spray a little oil on those. These little ball joints, okay? Right in the end of the ball joint, a little bit of oil, light oil, stops some squeaking and stuff. Anything moving, all these linkages right here for the parking brake, right here, these linkages, a little bit of oil, these little posts, a little bit of oil, okay? And the end of the cable, both sides. A little bit goes a long way, okay? The other place, underneath where we already were earlier, we have the rods for the controls, okay? They have those little same button ends like these, these little knuckles. Go ahead and spray a little bit of oil on those. Underside of the throttle, under here. Now these do have plastic bushings, so they technically don't need to be lubed. I still lube them anyways. A little bit there, a little bit there, okay? Any little thing that moves is gonna benefit from a little of the oil, okay? And this is also gonna stop it and protect it from rusting as well. This stuff stays on pretty well and does a good job, okay? So other than that, there's a couple other little odds and ends that you see around here. If you have an older machine not, that's not fuel injected, you're gonna have a choke arm and you'll have a choke cable that comes back here into this linkage, all right, so. So there's another little tip on that. Other than that, we're gonna be looking for holes in the muffler, looking for exhaust leaks. Okay, we're gonna look right up at the motor. These gaskets, I'll show you, I have some replacement ones. I got these here, this is, uh, these are for the intake manifold, but these little metal gaskets right here, these blow out fairly often. Those are gonna go between your exhaust and your motor. I got some replacement nuts and stuff as well, but Keep an eye out for those. Okay, another thing that breaks often on walker mowers are these fans. There is a left and a right fan. One is the blades are turned one way and one uh, turned the other. I see a lot of people putting them either on wrong or buying the wrong ones. So make sure you've got a right hand side, which is I believe the counterclockwise and then the clockwise, which is the uh, left hand side. I might have that reversed, look it up. Um, but make sure you get the right one. Just notice two other areas we could put a little oil right here on this little, that little fitting here, these little pins, any of those little spots right there, okay? And you can see how that oil kind of coats and seeps right in and stays on there really nice. This stuff works really, really well. I've been pretty happy with it. All right, we're gonna do a good overall greasing. So at this point right now, we've got to replace this hydro, gonna replace this blower. We gotta drill this bolt out. We got this chute right here needs to be replaced. Haven't got to the deck yet. We're gonna inspect those gear boxes, see if there's any leaks. I believe he mentioned one of them is leaking. Uh, so we need to attend to that. Uh, while we're down here, we're just looking at these, this wiring, make sure everything's looking decent, nothing loose, chafed, rusted, broken. Our starter's right down in there. Okay, everything's looking good there. Looking at the engine for leaks, looking for oil leaks. It seems to be pretty dry. Going to have a little bit of debris around the oil filter just because it spills when you change it. Looks like this valve cover might be leaking, just seeping a very little bit. It's got a little bit of dried up oil on there. It might just be from spilling down from adding oil, which is probably exactly what it is. You spill a little, it drips down, and then dirt gets on it and coats it. So nothing too much to worry about there. All right, here's the PTO belt that I was talking about right here. Flip that over, look at that. These you should kind of have on hand. You should always have a spare set of belts for every belt on this machine on hand if you're running a walker mower. You do not want to have one go down and not have it on you. One of the best parts about a walker mower is you can change the belt out in the field. Why not have it with you? All right, so that's about that. I noticed this, I uh, forgot what they call this, the pre-turbine air cleaner or whatever it is, but... This looks like it might have taken a hit. It's got some tape holding it together. Not sure what that's about, but almost looks like the bolt fell out right here. I don't know. 
see if there's something I can fix up for that or not. Other than that, you'd be replacing it. And yeah, that's about it uh, as far as obvious and common things that go on the Walker mower. Of course, you always want to check all your, your tire pressures. Make sure that you got the proper amount of air. You want to check all your bearings and your deck, your caster wheels. You're looking for play. Everything seems to be nice and tight there. Same one. This one's got a little play, but not too bad. And uh, let's go ahead and flip this deck up and get a good look at that. This is another use for this oil. So you got these little balls and springs inside here. This dries up. There's no grease fitting in this part. There is a grease fitting right inside here for the U-joint, but there's not a grease fitting here. So this is another good use for this stuff here. Splines. You want to loosen this up, make sure that it springs back freely and that these balls inside are nice and free. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to put this, take this on and off. I find that that pretty much any time you're doing something to the mower needs some oil. But again, this stuff will stay on pretty good and coat it decently. So checking for binding on this U-joint or extra play. This is nice and tight, free, no issues there. So we're just going to go ahead and clean off the grease fitting. Go ahead and put some grease in there. All right, so here we are under the deck. Now for starters, these decks wear out very often. Baffles will start to break, they'll bend, they'll fall off, they'll rust. Uh, I've, they, they do have repair sheet metal pieces that you can buy that are pre-cut to re-weld and fix. I have repaired decks before, restored them right to the, down to nothing. I've also replaced them and bought new ones. Uh, the last time I bought a new deck was two or three years ago. I actually have it on my channel. I believe it was about eight, eight to nine hundred dollar area. I seriously think you should consider before taking the time of all the welding and buying the plates and repainting a deck shell without the actual, uh, it doesn't come with the gearboxes, the blades or nothing. It's just a metal shell with the baffling. Uh, seriously consider uh, just replacing it as a whole. Uh, most of the time, that's the way to go. I mean, if you just got a little small repair you need to make, a little bit of welding, maybe some touch up and repaint, um, I find you're going to get from four to six years out of a deck shell, depending on how much you mow. Uh, you're going to do some touch up in between, maybe a couple of repairs, maybe have a couple of issues. Um, but that's where I'm at with that. Now, um, where we're at now is I'm going to take the blades off and I'm going to look for oil leak uh, at the bottom of these gearboxes, which I can already tell. You can see some oil here. You can already tell this one's leaking. It looks like this one might be as well. We're going to pull these off and get a good look. The way these blades go, you got these cups and there's little flat areas that line up with the flat areas on the shaft. Then you've got a flat washer, a lock washer, and then the nut. can tell right here, see all that oil? There's a seal under this plate. You can actually change the seal right from here without doing anything. You can pop the seal off and put a new one in. Same thing on this side. But what we want to do is check for, for play in those bearings. If the bearings are still nice and tight, which these ones seem to be, we can get away with replacing just that lower seal. There's a part number, I believe it's actually a Tecumseh um, part number and you can get away with repairing these gearboxes and not having to replace them. So just because it's leaking doesn't, need, doesn't mean you need new gearboxes. These are actually pretty stout. Unless you hit anything crazy and break teeth off inside, they do last quite a bit. All right, so doing a good visual under here, just kind of looking at all these baffles. These are all here for a reason. If there's any that are majorly bent, we're going to scrape all this grass out of here to get a better look, but everything appears to be in good shape under here. We don't see any holes. 
Uh, got these couple little baffles. These usually bend up if you hit things. This deck's actually, the shell itself is in pretty damn good shape. Uh, looks like there's been a couple of incidents here and there, but nothing major. So this definitely has a good amount of life left in it. I would say at least two or three years, if not more. Uh, but we do want to take care of that leak in the gearboxes because we do not want to want to run those gearboxes dry and that is the lowest point of the gearbox Is that seal so We're gonna go ahead and replace at the very least Those lower seals. We're also going to inspect the upper to see if the inputs Are leaking as well. Okay, right here. I'm checking this u-joint for some excess play Checking to make sure it moves nice and freely Everything looks good there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these shrouds to get a better look at the gearboxes to see what we're working with. Uh, these are just a couple of Phillips screws and then there's some 7 16 or sometimes they're 10 millimeter nuts right here, or bolts right here to remove this. The majority of these are like I said 7 16 which this one is as well. Uh, I think I've seen some that are 10 millimeter and I don't know if Walker did that or if it was just somebody that had replaced them and just kind of screwed them in even though it was a little bit wrong thread because the 10 millimeter is pretty close. Well, the actual, I think it's eight millimeter or six millimeter or whatever the actual bolt is, you know, the, uh, the thread of the bolt. And I think they just put the wrong ones in. Uh, I'm not sure of that, but it could be the one, so. You can, you don't have to take these all the way off. They are slotted, so you can just pull it back and slide. You can see how that is right there. And while we got this out, you can see obviously this has been bent. I'm gonna put this in the vise and bend it back with a little bit of hammer and straighten it all out best we can. Okay, so there's a seal right here in between here, which appears to be dry. Everything's looking good there. Now on the older style walkers, they used to have a bolt right here and here to hold this on. It wasn't bolted on the top. But then they added these little brackets you'll see to the sides of the gearboxes to allow it to be bolted up from the top right here like this. So they've done some small improvements and changes over the years, but nothing too crazy. For the most part, they've stayed the same for a long time. They are very simple machines once you have pretty much gone through them all. Pull that off right there. I'm just gonna stick the screws back here so we don't lose them. And we do have some moisture here, so. Kind of looking for the story. You're trying to figure out where it's coming from, why it's coming from. Okay, so I'll wipe this off. We've got a, what appears to be a fairly new gearbox on both sides here. I don't know if this is original or not. No, nope. looks like maybe all three were either replaced together or they're all original. I don't know, I see a coat of paint on here, so it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, but basically the situation that we're looking at now is there is something leaking up, up here because it's wet. It appears to be this upper gasket, there's a little gasket inside here. Um, sometimes these bolts, there's little bolts right here between these tubes, you can see them right there. Sometimes those can loosen up. So we'll snug those up to make sure that those aren't, but if these leak, they're not too bad, it's not that bad of a, a thing because it's kind of a slow leak. It's a controlled leak that you can kind of just keep topping them off and it's not a big deal, um, but the reason all this grass and stuff is in here and stuck in here is because there's oil up here. Okay, so what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and clean this all off really good. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the lower seals in both of these boxes. This one appears to be okay. I don't see any leak, it's dry down in here. Um, but it's hard to say because it's definitely some oil I don't know if it's, like I said, these gaskets here leaking or what. But we're going to definitely replace those lower seals and uh, clean these up. And then we're going to take all these tops off and inspect, see if we see anything that looks like it's leaking. 
but want to make sure everything's snugged up nice and tight. And that's about it for the, as far as the deck goes, you know, you're just looking for excess wear in any of these pins, super wobbly things. Again, this is a 2015, it's about eight years old, this machine. Uh, so it's got some, some use, but it's not, uh, it's not all clapped out yet like some of the older machines can get. All depends on how well it was taken care of. Uh, keeping these machines lubed is a big thing. They last so much longer. Every moving part on it will last longer if it's lubed. So yeah, this actually has a date of 2014. That has a date of 2014, and that has a date of 2014. So these are all original gearboxes on this deck. Said they were made in 2014, the machines are 2015. That adds up and makes sense. So, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these covers and get a look at the gears inside. Okay, so what I'm finding is these screws, look at how loose they are. I'm barely, barely turning the screwdriver. See that? literally barely tightened up so that's probably why it's leaking out of this cover these just backed off a little bit or just loosened up or maybe the uh, gasket itself is just not as not as thick as it was when it was new um, but these do these screws kind of vibrate and hit on the bottom of this panel right here and I think that vibration loosens them up a little bit through time and uh, so that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Also a reason why this one's probably not leaking because these ones are probably tighter. Yeah. Those are way tighter, but let's give these a nice little snug up and that's probably all that needed, needed to happen. I have reused these gaskets pretty often. Uh, I have also used RTV. I don't like to do that. I prefer to use a gasket. But if I really have to, I do seal it with a little thin coat of RTV. Um, but if you can, go ahead and get the right, the right gaskets for it. But usually the gasket will stick to this plate itself and not the actual housing. And usually it doesn't break, especially if it's leaking. That means it's, the bond is probably already broken, as you can see right there. Okay, so we can reuse this gasket. It just needs to be tightened down a little bit. You could put a thin layer of a gasket, gasket adhesive or something on it if you really wanted to, but it's not under an immense amount of pressure or anything like that. It's just a, uh, just the top cover. And as we can see, it's a good thing we did this because you run this much longer or any longer and we're gonna have a failure. Now these gears, besides I see a little bit of rust on them, there's no bits or pieces down inside here. We've got a little bit of rust just from the moisture because there's a lack of oil. But all the oil has leaked out of these gearboxes, so those seals are definitely leaking. These top covers need to be tightened up. And then we wanna, when we get it back together, we wanna keep an eye on them to make sure that they're, uh, they're not leaking because just like the PTO box has similar gears in it inside the machine, uh, you keep oil in these, they will last you a long time besides if you hit a huge rock or something and smack a gear or break a shaft or something like that, they will break. But other than that, you will get a good amount of time out of these. So had he not brought this in and kept it running it without that oil, there's no doubt he'd be looking at all new gearboxes. So it's silly not to just take that little extra time every once in a while. Now you'll know it's leaking ahead of time. You're gonna be under there sharpening the blades. You're gonna see the oil. So don't just ignore it. Be observant, look around. When you see things that look out of place, like when you see like this, this black goo, this is just dirt that's sticking to oil. There's oil, there shouldn't be oil. There's something leaking. A Little bit of leaking is not the end of the world. Like I said, just don't run out of fluid. Clean it off, keep an eye on it before it gets worse. See if you can fix it with something simple like this. You can see where the oil is leaking out right here. See how it's all wet on that gasket? It's leaking right out of here. Okay? Leaking right down. 
So all this needed literally was a little bit of tightening on these screws and it wouldn't have been leaking up here. All this would have been prevented. So again, just keeping an eye on things. The shaft, same thing, seems to be in good shape. It's nice and tight. I don't see any issues in the gears. They look good. Just empty on oil. Okay, so I probably will use a little bit of gasket sealer. Clean this all up really good. I'm going to replace those lower seals and then tighten these screws up nice. Now don't go crazy with tightening them up. You just need to snug them up. But we just went through this whole machine pretty quickly. It's nothing too crazy. Now when we go ahead and replace that blower, it is a little bit tight. We take it out through the bottom. We got some bolts we got to deal with. It is, it is a little bit of a, an ordeal to get it out, but it's not, it's not impossible. It's not that hard. I've done probably 20 or 30 of them in my days from all the way back from the small. They had a 9.5 or a 9 inch blower, I think it was. And then they slowly got bigger blowers throughout the years and they're up to the 10.5 now. But they've had a few different versions of that blower. All pretty much replaced the same though. So that's about it. Pretty much gone through a lot of the the obvious things. Uh, gave you some tips on some maintenance uh, as far as things to oil and to look out for. Uh, you know, wheels are they're all pretty much simple. You you know, their tires, wheels with bearings. Just look everything over. Uh, th there's nothing too crazy on these machines. Uh, the only thing that's hard about them is everything's kind of you know in a compact area. Everything's a little bit tight. But everything is pretty serviceable on these machines. I've got plenty of videos to show. Uh, you know, I've had these down to the frame many times. Uh, pulling the motor out, I think it was 15, 20 minutes. I have a video on pulling an engine out. Really simple to do. Uh, there's not a lot of work involved if you want to pull that out. He did not complain about any issues with the motor. Everything's running there fine. Doesn't have any issues. So. Um, other than a visual inspection and basic things like filters or whatever, you know, looking over. Uh, and maybe a basic service. We're not doing anything there. The issue more was that leaking. He knew that he had some leaking gearboxes issues and also the uh, the hydro. So this machine has some good tires on it. Still got some good tread on it. Uh, this is going to be washed up. We're going to go ahead and replace all those parts. I'll have a follow-up video replacing all those parts and give this thing a good washing, get it ready to go. And uh, this thing will be out back out in the field and uh, be super reliable hopefully and uh, off we go but that's it for this video guys uh, hope you learned something I'm sure you did I think I'm gonna take the rest of the day and go ahead and ride this beauty it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon all right guys thanks for watching have a good one